Hello everyone and welcome back to another UE4 tutorial and we're carrying on with IK uh, work in this uh, video and what we're going to be doing today is adding on to our feet IK so previously we've done feet IK with our feet doing like so but now we want to do it with the arms now what do I mean by using it with the arms well imagine if your character runs into a wall maybe it'd be good idea to put their hands out in front of them to brace themselves against the wall so what we're going to be doing today is covering how to achieve this effect. So let's get going. So the way this works is that we're going to generate two line traces, one from each shoulder. And that shoulder line trace will go out and when it hits a wall, tell it to IK the hand into that position. So it's actually fairly quite simple. So let's go about how we actually sort this out. So let's go to our third person character and if you haven't already done the foot IK videos, I strongly recommend you go back and do those first, by the way, um, as we're using a lot of similar techniques as we saw there. So at the moment, we've got an event tick doing our various tracing for our feet. We now want to do tracing for our hands as well. So in here, we're going to create a new function and we're going to call it IK hand trace. Now, a lot of the IK hand trace uh, function here is going to be very similar to the foot trace one. So if you go to the foot trace one, we can copy a lot of this over. So we need socket name and distance as two inputs. Socket name is a name. And distance is a float. And for outputs though, we only need to have the hit location. So new output here and be hit location. And that'll be a vector. We also need another output and that's to determine whether or not we've actually hit a wall or not because you won't always want to put the hand out in front of the uh, player. You sometimes want to just let it continue as normal. So click on new parameter here and create a Boolean in here called has, has hit wall. And that'll be a Boolean as I've said. Okay, so let's disconnect that for now because now we've got to do our line trace. So again, very similar to the foot trace one, we're using a line trace here. Um, so come out and do line trace by channel. And in this one, we want to be a bit simpler than the feet uh, because we only want it to come out directly in front of the player from their shoulder location. So from there, we need to get the socket location. So drag from socket name and get location and you'll see get socket location of the mesh and that'll be your starting point boom next we want it to shoot out in the direction that the player is facing so we're going to get actor forward vector and then multiply that by a float and that float is going to be the distance. So we put in distance and it's right at the bottom, get distance. And that distance there refers to this parameter here. So that will give us a distance and then we want to add it on to this socket location. So drag from socket location, do add vector plus vector and then plug in your forward vector into it. This result will go into end. And there you have it. That's all you have to do. Next, we're going to go to out hit. We're going to split that by right clicking and choosing split. Once we've done that, you will find various options, but we're only interested in one, and that's the hit location. We just want to return where it hit the wall. So first thing to do, we're going to do a return value here to determine whether or not we actually hit something. So let's put in a branch and connect that to the return value. And plug that in. If it's true, it's going to go along to this return node. And the hit location is going to come from out hit location. And then you want to tick the has hit wall. If it's false, we're going to do another return node. But this time, we leave hit location alone and we turn off has hit wall. And click compile. And that is it. So what we're going to do is now go back to the event graph. And at the end of our work we've done for the IK foot, we're going to drag in our IK hand trace. 
So we're going to do one for each hand. Uh, so here we've got a socket name and distance. So we have to add some sockets into our mesh first of all. Click on the mesh and go to the right hand side and double click to open up your skeletal rig. In here you'll find the skeleton tree. And you want to find the upper arm L. So go to upper arm and you want that position there. So we're going to right click on that bone layer and click add socket. And we'll leave it as upper arm underscore L socket. We also want to do it for the right hand, uh, arm as well. So add socket. And there we have it. Click save and close that. So we're going to do two of these. Uh, so the first one, let's just do the left hand first of all. So here I want to copy the exact name I've got in my mesh. So let's just go back to my mesh, find my socket, and I'm going to go and copy the name and paste it into socket name. For distance, you want to use the distance of 100. Next, we're going to output the hit location and has hit wall and store that as variables here. So the hit hit wall is going to be a positive here. And we'll do left hit wall. And uh, be a bit more specific with that. Left uh, hand hit wall. And we want IK left hand location. And that one would be a vector. And you will plug these both in here as sets and connect them up. We also want to do exactly the same for the right arm as well. So I can add it to the end here or I can just do a sequence if I like. If I want to keep it a bit more organized, I'm going to paste that down there. To then two, and just change that to R in my socket name. And the two variables are also going to be different. We want to create IK right hand location. And we want to duplicate the Boolean as well and do right hand hit wall. And drag those out like we did for the left hand. And that's it. Hit compile and save. So now we've got the data, we now need to interpret that data over on the animation graph. So let's head over to that. So this is what we currently had set up for our animation graph. Now, what's quite important about this is that we need to cache what we've got going on here as a cached value. Um, reason being is that we need to determine when we want to turn off or on this animation. So if we cache this, we can then blend it with different types of animations. So I'm going to disconnect from there. And after components are local, drag out and do cache pose. And I'm going to save this one as foot IK cache. And there you go. Next, we're going to go down to the variable list on the left hand side. And we need to add a few variables in here. We need to go um, IK hand uh, locator or effector, rather. And uh, sorry, left hand effector. And that would be a vector. Uh, yeah, vector. We want to duplicate that and make that right hand as well. And then we will do the booleans as well. So this would be uh, left hand hit wall. And that would be a boolean. And you want to do right hand hit wall. So let's do left hand first. So we want to, let's just do the IK part. So the IK part is going to be very similar to what we've got here. We need a two bone IK and then a transform bone. So let's get the two bone IK. Click on it and then on the right hand side, change the IK bone here to the 
hand L. The component pose is going to come from this cache we've got. So let's get our foot cache. And plug that into the component pose there. The effector location is going to be the left hand effector. Drag that in. Now the line trace is currently outputting a world position. So we need to click on our two bone IK, go to on the right hand side and change the effector here from component space to world space. We then want to take from there and transform the bone. Um, and the reason why we're going to do that um, is we need to rotate the hand up so they press up against the wall. So to push the hand up and I've already done this before so I know the numbers. So it's 90 in the Y and 180 in the Z. Again, you can tweak this and change this however much you like later on. So once you've got that, we're then going to cache that pose out again. Uh, so you have to transform to local, component to local. And then you can cache it. And this will be the left hand IK. So for example, let's just put in our left hand IK. And plug that in to here. So we need to get our variables from our player character and into here. So that is handled on the event graph. And on the event graph, we've got my player pawn. So we're going to drag that out again, choose get. And from there, we want to get IK and you want to do left hand location. And from there, we want to set uh, left IK left hand effector. Compile. Um, Oh, apologies, we forgot to choose a bone for the transform. Click on transform bone and we'll change the bone here to modifier to hand L. Uh, what else I forget? Du -du -du -du. Oh, to take to uh, rotation mode, we want that to use replace existing. And the mode is set to ignore all of them. You want to change it to replace existing for rotation. There you go. So back on the event graph, uh, we're going to get our boolean as well now. So again, from our player pawn, get left hand hit wall. And you want to set the boolean here to that value. Hit compile. So let's go to the animation graph, because at the moment you can see it doing its thing at 2000, which we don't want to happen all the time. We only want to do it when this is true. So go to your animation graph. And for this, we can use a blend space by ball. So do blend by ball. And the ball is going to be left hand hit wall. And the true pose is going to be left hand IK. And the false pose is going to be just the foot IK. So like that. So ignore the hand stuff and just do the foot stuff. And that will be plugged into our result. And that's it. Hit compile and save. And let's test this out. So as I'm running around, we should see our hand pop up against the wall when we go near it. Just like that. And when we walk away, it lets go. So that's just doing the left hand. Uh, we're now going to do the right hand. So again, back to our, begin, uh, our uh, animation blueprint. Go to the event graph. And we're going to do basically what you see here again, but for this time for the right hand. So let's drag the pawn out again. Get right and get IK, uh, no, uh, location, yep. And also get right and hit wall. And we're going to set the IK vector there. And set the right hand hit wall. There. Hit compile. Go to animation graph and we're going to copy exactly what we did for our arms, for our left arm, sorry, and do the exact same for our left arm. Oh, sorry, our left arm to our right arm. So I'm just going to cop uh, comment on this and do left hand IK. And we're going to select all of this and copy paste. 
And we just want it's all got mixed up here. Let's put this back up. Uh, so here we have to change which arm we want to use. So I'm just change the comment here to reflect that. Right hand IK. And we want to change it to use the right hand effector. Not the left arm. And we want to change the bone here to hand R. And on this one, we're going to change the bone to hand R2. And there we go. This pose, though, will be different. So let's uh, delete this and create a new save pose. So cache pose, and we'll call this one right hand IK. Hit compile. So at the moment, left hand hit wall is doing this one. And then we've got right hand hit wall doing nothing at the moment. So let's do the right hand hit wall exactly like we've done here. Blend by ball. Right hand hit wall. The foot cache is going to be exactly the same. And then true, it's going to use the right hand IK cache. Then we want to blend these two together. Now the way we do that is with a layered blend. So do layered blend per bone and connect the two to it. And the bone we want to branch at, uh, if we go down to the layer setup on the right hand side here, you see branch filters, we'll add one to this and expand open. The bone name is gonna be the last one on the list. So this is in a hierarchical order. So if we go down to upper arm here, this is where we want to branch off, okay? So we go to blueprints and do upper arm underscore R, hit enter, and then plug that into our output pose. Hit compile, and let's test this out. So now when I walk up to a wall, both arms will go out. Now notice one arm on the left here is fine, but the one on the right, we've got a broken wrist. That's just because the way it's reflected into the mesh. So the way we fix that is just changing the transform on the right arm to be a little bit different. In this case, we'll change the Z here to, uh, I think it's Z, we'll try it, we'll click the zero. Not it might be the Y. A bit of trial and error just to see what it looks like. Uh, yeah, it's the Y. So let's turn it back, 180, and then do this as minus 90. There we go. Uh, his hand is facing the wrong way, so let's turn that around. That would probably be the Z. Let's change that to zero. It's just a tweaking of the mesh you've got. That's all. And there we go. Two arms. And because they're independent, if I was to hover, say, off this corner here, only a left arm will touch the wall. And works on that because it's just about the right height. Stairs. So you get a more realistic look if you go up to a wall and hit it. It looks kind of nice. And the arms bend and stretch like IK would handle it. And there we have it. So we've got IK feet and IK arms now. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and you kind of like it. If you want to see anything else with IK related, let us know in the comments below. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for the continued support. If you want to watch more videos of my content before anyone else, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where a donation of just $1 will get access to all my videos before anyone else. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.